This is Andrew with Android Central, and this is our full Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge review. It's undeniable that last year, Samsung really took a risk with the Galaxy S6 Edge after the failure of the Galaxy Note Edge in the year before. It wasn't a proven fact that Samsung was going to draw in any consumers with its dual edge display. But in 2016, the Galaxy S7 Edge is undeniably the pinnacle of the flagship line for Samsung. With the Galaxy S7 Edge, it's all about Samsung putting the best possible components, design, external, internal, everything is all the best that it has to offer. Right off the top, it's bigger than the regular Galaxy S7, which gives you a 5.5 inch screen to work with, but also gives room for a 3600 milliamp hour battery, offering the best longevity of any Galaxy S phone to date. On the inside is powered by one of two of the best processors, Snapdragon 820 or Samsung's own Exynos 8 octa-core processor. Four gigs of RAM is gonna let you run anything you wanna throw at it. And yes, the SD card is back, adding 200 gigs of extra storage to the 32 gigs already inside the phone. On the outside, it's more of the same from Samsung compared to 2015, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The dual curved display is on the front still, that flexible display underneath Gorilla Glass 4, but now it's accentuated with the same kind of curves on the back like you might have seen on the Galaxy Note 5. It means there's a little less metal to go around on the outside, but it's amazingly stunning to look at, and it has extra usability because it's shrunk down just a little bit from the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. And the extra bonus here is that the camera pod doesn't stick out nearly as much on the back. It's less than half a millimeter, so it won't be rocking around on the table on it. Around the world, you'll have a choice of four different colors. A really bright and ostentatious gold, a reflective silver, a dull white, and a stealthy black. All four colors are slightly changed from last year, and they're all gorgeous. Now you wouldn't know just by looking at it, but the Galaxy S7 Edge has an IP68 waterproof and dustproof rating. Now that's just a bunch of numbers, of course, but what it really means is that you can put this phone 30 minutes in water up to three feet deep and it won't come out looking any worse for the wear. And while it's down there, if it's picking up any grit or anything like that, it's not gonna matter either. And it does that without any blocks over the ports, the headphone jack, USB port, microphones, it doesn't matter. You don't need a waterproof case with this phone. Now, you shouldn't be using this for any kind of action photography. It's not gonna record video underwater or do anything like that. But if you're sitting down to dinner and somebody splashes a drink all over it, or if you're walking here and you happen to dunk it into a pond, it's gonna be all right. So one of the big things everybody was asking Samsung to bring back with the Galaxy S7 is the micro SD card expansion slot. And they've tucked it away right next to the SIM card so there's no extra ports on the Galaxy S7 Edge but you can toss in a micro SD card up to 200 gigabytes there. Now, it's gonna work just like it did in the Galaxy S5 and previous, even though the phone's running Marshmallow. Now, that means that there's no adoptable storage here. The SD card is just gonna work as a separate partition of storage where you can store media, let your camera record to, and swap files back and forth between your camera and uh, maybe your phone and your laptop and your desktop at home. That's okay though, because additional storage is additional storage and being able to expand after the fact is a huge plus. When it comes to software, this is Samsung's first phone to launch with Android 6.0 Marshmallow. And while that's a big jump from Lollipop, visually things haven't changed all that much. Samsung's taken this opportunity to flatten out the interface just a little bit more and drop a lot of the bright blues and yellows that were a bit garish in the previous version. A lot more whites, grays, and blacks accent the entire interface. But if you used a Samsung phone before, you're gonna feel right at home on the Galaxy S7 Edge. But on the Edge side, you're gonna have a couple of new features on that curved display. Swiping in on the Edge UX, as it's called, from either the left or right side, you're gonna be able to do even more. So you're not just gonna be able to access a couple of common apps and people, you're back to having full widget experiences, including news tickers, some extra tools, uh, some stock information, anything that you can download and put on there, from third-party developers included, will be right at your fingertips even when you're not on the home screen. Two of the headline features in this release for Samsung are a game launcher, which lets you pin distinct apps into a games folder that when you launch them, you're gonna get the full power of the processor in the Galaxy S7, and you're not gonna be interrupted by notifications. On the other side of things, in the more subtle category, you have an always-on display on the Galaxy S7 Edge. That means when you go to hit the power button, the screen turns off, and then momentarily it'll come back on and you're gonna see information like a clock, your notifications, 
battery charge status, all that stuff that you would normally turn on the screen for is gonna be right there at a glance without even touching the phone. After having one of the best smartphone cameras available last year with the Galaxy S6 Edge, Samsung actually blew up the whole thing and started from scratch in the Galaxy S7 Edge. The big number drop here is from 16 megapixels last year to 12 megapixels this year. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It lets Samsung increase the pixel size to 1.4 microns. Now, that doesn't sound very big, but for pixels, that's really large. And with each one being larger, it brings in way more light. Now, that's also aided by the fact that we have an f over 1.7 lens, which is an improvement over f 1.9 last year. Now, that also lets in additional light, meaning the sensor gets more light into it, and it's able to absorb more. Samsung's obviously focusing on low light photography here, and that's really where we take a lot of our smartphone photos and where we're most disappointed historically with the photo results. So with these two features of the larger pixels and the wider aperture, the Galaxy S7 Edge has better low light performance than last year, which is very surprising considering how good we rated the Galaxy S6 Edge. Now the only downside here is that it seems to have taken a little hit in quality on brighter scenes where the Galaxy S7 Edge just lacks that very, very tack sharp uh, lines and edges around everything, mostly because we have lower megapixel count, so you're not gonna be able to zoom in on things and notice all that fine detail, but it also seems to be that the sensor style just isn't well suited to that bright, bright photography in the way that the Galaxy S6 Edge was. Whether or not that trade-off of better low light performance for a slight decrease in bright light performance is worth it to you is gonna be a personal decision. But Samsung's very clearly positioning this camera to be a lot better in low light, and I think it's gonna be a good decision. So when you bring it all together, does the Galaxy S7 Edge stand up to the immense pressure of being a top-end flagship Samsung phone? Well, actually, it really does. When you look at the hardware, the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge is a work of art. When you see the curved metal around the sides, the curved glass on both the front and back, it really feels just as great as it looks. And at the same time, Samsung managed to fit in an SD card slot, which everybody was asking for, and waterproofing without any flaps over the ports. Though those extra curves make it a little tougher to hold onto when added to the larger screen size, it's really worth it when you consider just how nice it is to look at. And if you just can't put up with it, of course there's the smaller Galaxy S7 for you to choose. But if you do choose to stick with the larger size, you're gonna get some extra software features on the edge screens. You can do more with them now, with glanceable information from all different kinds of sources, extra tools, everything that you want that you just won't wanna go back to the home screen to get. The Galaxy S7 Edge really meets and exceeds all of my expectations on performance. And it does so while keeping the battery life at a full day, easily 16 hours out of the 3600 milliamp hour battery. Perhaps the area where the Galaxy S7 Edge comes up short is the camera, surprisingly. The drop to 12 megapixels with larger pixels and a larger aperture means that it's great in low light situations. It even bests the Galaxy S6 of last year in some cases. But the problem is that's come at the cost of decreased quality in good lighting situations, which you wouldn't have expected. It's still gonna compete to be one of the best cameras out there today, but it's gonna actually have competition. And that's something that we didn't really say last year. But when you wrap it all together, is the Galaxy S7 Edge worthy of being your next smartphone? Well, there's a good chance that it is. If you can put up with the larger size and slightly awkward edges, you're gonna be getting a really powerful, expandable, and waterproof phone with Marshmallow on board and a great camera. So now that you're done learning about the Galaxy S7 Edge, you can learn about the smaller, flatter version, the Galaxy S7, and the video annotation right above me.